Scientists like Dr. Lars Peter Thiessen. Here at the General Motors lab in Rüsselsheim, Germany, he's effective ways to harness hydrogen's power potential. Scientists like Dr. Lars Peter Thiessen. Here at the General Motors lab in Rüsselsheim, Germany, he's developing the hydrogen fuel cell. It may not look much, but you never know. This rubber doormat could be the energy source of the future. A rocket burns hydrogen with oxygen, producing an almighty blast of hot gas. Great for getting into space, not so good for going to the shops. So the fuel cell doesn't burn hydrogen, instead it uses it to produce electricity. Hydrogen and oxygen enter separately on either side of the cell. The hydrogen electrons are really keen to meet up with the oxygen, but the fuel cell makes them work for it, forcing them to travel Abu the circuit to get to the oxygen on the other side. That movement of electrons around the fuel cell is electric current. And the only byproduct is water. The problem is, each fuel cell produces only 0.7 volts of electricity. This isn't enough to power an egg whisk, let alone a car engine. So Lars Peter stacks hundreds of fuel cells on top of each other and gets enough power to punch a two-ton car up to 160 kilometers per hour. But this kind of performance takes years of hard work and lots of money. We have invested more than 1 billion euros in this technology and there is still uh, money to add. Not a great price per litre so far, but it's only going to improve as they get engines out of the lab and into cars. Once the hydrogen fuel cell is installed, the fuel tanks are attached and filled. To stop them springing a leak and going all Hindenburg, the tanks are made from a tough carbon fibre composite. So the radical roadster is ready to hit the streets. It's an interesting bit of science, but will it catch on? Well, at the moment, one of these cars will set you back more than a hundred thousand euros. So it could be a few more years before they do.